As of now, we spoke about all the different types of waves, beginning with mechanical waves and ending with electromagnetic waves. But we have yet to discuss the mathematical representation of waves using equations and formulas. And that's exactly what we're going to look at in this lecture. So we're going to look at the mathematical representation of propagating waves. So let's suppose that we begin with a sinusoidal wave, let's suppose an electromagnetic wave that is moving along the x-axis with a velocity f, a wavelength lambda, and an amplitude given by capital A. Now at an initial time of t equals zero seconds, let's suppose our wave is not yet moving. So at a time of zero seconds, because our wave is not yet moving, that means its velocity is zero, and so we can represent our wave on the x-y axis as shown in the following diagram. So if we're examining an electromagnetic wave, for example, we're only examining the electric field and we're not looking at the magnetic field. So this line essentially represents presents the motion of our propagating wave. So this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis, where A represents the amplitude, it's the maximum vertical displacement of our propagating wave. Now at a time of zero seconds, since the wave is a sinusoidal wave, that basically means we can represent our wave using the following equation. So, y of x, where x is simply our x-coordinate that lies along the x-axis, and y of x is simply our vertical displacement. It's the position of our wave along the y-axis. So y of x is equal to the product of a, where a is the maximum vertical displacement known as the amplitude multiplied by sine of 2 pi divided by lambda multiplied by x, where lambda is the wavelength and 2 pi is simply one full cycle. Now this entire equation represents the vertical displacement of our stationary wave with respect to x. Now suppose the same exact wave now begins to move to the right in the positive direction along the x-axis with a constant velocity given by v. Then in time, t seconds, the wave has shifted. It has moved to the right, a distance given by v, the velocity of the wave, multiplied by t, the time period over which our wave moved. So that means we can take this equation and rewrite it in the following format. So notice our y does not only depend on the x, it now depends on the time as well. So y of x comma t is equal to a multiplied by sine of 2 pi divided by lambda and because our entire wave has shifted to the right by distance of v multiplied by t, that means we subtract v multiplied by t from x and that's exactly what we get. So let's label this equation as equation 1. So, this equation essentially describes our moving wave as it moves to the right along the x-axis. So once again, this equation describes a sinusoidal wave moving to the right along the x-axis. It gives the vertical displacement of the wave with respect to two different variables. With respect to x, our x-coordinate along the x-axis, and with respect to time. Now, let's take this equation and let's represent it in a slightly different, more common format. 
So recall that because velocity of our wave is equal to the product of the frequency and the wavelength of that wave, and because the period T is equal to 1 divided by the frequency, we can take this equation, we can multiply this factor 2 pi divided by lambda by x, and by this we get the following result next. Notice that we can take our velocity and represent it in terms of lambda multiplied by frequency. The lambdas will cancel from top to bottom and we can represent our frequency in terms of period. And we get the following equation. Let's label this equation 2. So these two equations are exactly the same, but this equation is more commonly used. So once again, we see that y of x comma t is equal to a multiplied by sine 2 pi x divided by lambda minus 2 pi t divided by our period capital T. Now finally, we can take this equation and represent it in yet another equivalent way. So let's recall that omega, also known as the angular frequency, is equal to 2 pi divided by the period capital T. And let's represent this quantity, 2 pi divided by lambda, as lowercase k. Then this equation becomes the following equation. Let's label this equation as equation 3. So y x comma t is equal to a of sine of k x minus omega t, where k is this quantity and omega is this quantity. Once again, omega is the angular frequency also known as the angular velocity and k is known as the wave number. Now, what exactly is the phase and the phase velocity of a wave? So the term inside the following sign, so kx minus omega multiplied by t is commonly known as the phase of our wave. So if you're asked to calculate the phase of your wave, you simply calculate the inside of the sign term. And our v, the velocity of our propagating wave, is also known as the phase velocity. So the velocity of the wave is the phase velocity of that wave, and it's equal to our lambda, the wavelength, multiplied by the frequency f, and this is equal to, well, because our lambda is equal to 2 pi divided by k, by this definition, we see simply bring the fader, we simply bring the lambda to this side, the k to the bottom, and because the frequency is equal to omega divided by 2 pi, if we multiply these two out, the two pi's appear on top and bottom, we can cancel them out and we see that our phase velocity of our propagating wave is equal to omega, the angular frequency divided by k, the wave number. So, we can use this equation to calculate what the phase velocity of our propagating wave is. So notice, these three equations are completely equivalent. But this is the most common equation used, and this is the least common and more complicated equation. Now notice that these three equations essentially describe the movement of our our propagating wave as it moves in the positive direction along the x-axis. If our wave instead moves in the negative direction along the x-axis, we simply replace this negative sign with a positive sign. So, once again, note that if the sinusoidal wave is traveling along the x-axis in the negative direction, we we follow these same procedures to determine these three equations, but we replace our negative sign with a positive sign because our entire wave will be shifted to the left 
instead of the right. So this last equation becomes y of x comma t is equal to a sine of kx plus omega multiplied by t.